Hello. We'll get going in, uh, well, we'll get going pretty much right away here. Uh, welcome everybody to uh, Kensington Wine Markets, uh, Berry Brothers and Rudd, KWM Casks and more virtual tasting. Uh, Jeff is here so we can start. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, well, uh, we are uh, missing somebody that we usually have tonight. Uh, Andrew has uh, gone into witness protection so he can, uh, his liver can avoid alcohol for a little bit, I guess. Um, he's taken a, a little bit of a vacation and uh, we'll be back uh, later, but you're, uh, you've got Harmy and I for this tasting, uh, the Blinded by Bourbon tasting, of course, which Andrew would never sit in on uh, next Thursday uh and the, or this thursday coming up and then uh it'll probably be myself harmony and sean for the uh glenn woman and lock scotia just tasting next tuesday if you're in on that as well so uh you've got the a team or b team or c team whatever you want to call us but uh thank you all for joining us for this one for the berry brothers and rudd tasting um should be a very very cool lineup um i have to admit that uh we got four single casks of Berry Brothers in last month. We Well, July, was it? We've been selling them for a little bit. And uh, I haven't tasted most of these except to set the lineup uh, since we got them in. I've been kind of quietly just waiting for this tasting to happen so that uh, I could focus on it for the first time for this. I'm, of course, uh, very, very familiar with the Tobermory. That'll be uh, number six in the lineup just because I'm a huge fan of that. But uh I am uh, looking forward to tasting all these kind of for the first time in a while, at least, uh, along with all of you. Um, Harmony, have you gone through all of our new casks? No. Um, uh, again, Tobermory has been my favorite thus mm -hmm. far. I mean, the Ardmore was good, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, I don't, I may have tried the Glenmore because everyone was talking about how good it was. But I, I think my palate was still pretty coffee saturated <laughs> at the time. So I, it wasn't a fair shot, I don't think. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to try them. And I know that for a few of these, uh, the supplies are limited for something that's just come in recently. So yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, it should be a fun lineup then. So we uh, hopefully you guys saw we... Uh, I was actually very proactive, which doesn't happen often at Kensington Wine Market. If you got the uh, the tasting email that went out yesterday, I put the set the lineup. Sammy kind of seconded everything that I chose as well. Um, so the lineup order was in the tasting. If you didn't see that or weren't paying attention and weren't expecting it there, just because we never do anything like that in our head of the game. Um, we are starting with the Tullabardine. Uh, next up for whiskey number two is the Berry's Perspective. Glenn Murray KWM cask is number three, followed by the Del Ewan KWM cask. Number five is the Inchgower KWM cask. Uh, six is the Tobermory KWM cask. And then we will finish at number seven with the Rua Moore or Rue Moore, Rue Moore, the Glenn, Peter Glenn Turret uh, KWM cask. Um, so uh, hopefully you guys have your glasses poured. And let's jump in with whiskey number one while we're nosing at tasting that i uh i uh, had a bit of time today so i put together a little bit of a slideshow presentation too for berry brothers and red that's uh it's nice that you have time for these things like... i know well th what i do is i delegate all my work to everybody else and then all of a sudden i've got plenty of time oh wonderful So Barry Brothers and Rudd, of course, uh, founded in 1698, uh, the oldest wine merchant in the world, uh, has royal ties, uh, selling uh, whiskey to the royals since uh, one of the King Henry somewhere along the way. Um, but uh, what I was surprised with is that on oh, here's the, the the first store. This is where Barry Brothers and Rudd started on number three, James Street. Uh, very close to the Buckingham Palace, if I remember correctly, although I haven't been there yet. Uh, this uh, that you can see underneath here, this is actually their cellar, which they uh, redeveloped a little bit over the last decade or so to make something pretty spectacular. Uh, that is looking out at the storefront there. Um, of course, wine merchants for a long, long time, but before they were wine merchants, uh, they started as a coffee house, essentially, selling, uh, they were coffee merchants, and they were founded by a woman, 
uh, back in 1698. Uh, they don't know her first name now. I'm not sure why that wasn't recorded, but she was always known as a widow born. There is a, a very high resolution photograph of her from the time. And uh, you can see one of the, the original coffee grinders that they used on, on the barrel over here as well. But yeah, started uh, as a coffee merchant, uh, diversified into cocoa, tea, spices, exotic goods stuff, apparently, and tobacco at one point as well. <clears throat> and didn't get into the wine game until the 1700s. Uh, also known for creating the King's Ginger, uh, a ginger liqueur that's still available nowadays. We've carried it here and there, but not too often. Uh, back in 1903, uh, and coincidentally, that's when they first got their first royal warrant from King, Ed King Edward VII, and launched the Cuddy Sark blend, uh, which they no longer uh, own the rights to, that now belongs to Edrington Group, uh, but that was back in 1923, royal warrants issued uh, by Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Charles since and first wine merchant to launch a website back in nine, 1994 and still family owned and operated, which is uh, pretty impressive. <clears throat> but uh, I definitely was not aware that it was a, a woman that founded the, the first shop of what is now Barry Brothers and Rudd. That was uh, pretty cool to see. And they've had uh, a few uh, women in charge from the Barry and or Rudd family over uh, the last couple of hundred years as well. So how's the, the Tullabar die in 1993 so far? It, to me, it smells very old. Um, mm -hmm. Like kind of wet book kind of style, little waxy, like a, a mixed bag of like your crayons and your pencils and, and that sort of thing for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it also has like that burlap sack full of uh, like russet potatoes. Uh, <laughs> note that uh, I think it was actually Hunter years ago told me that tasting uh, or nosing note on uh, on an old Tullabardine at one time. And I get that starchiness and that malty note that's coming through on this one still. Um, mm -hmm. Tullabardine, even for newer stuff, is very, very much known for having that sort of malt forward style. And it's cool to see that even... What is it 26 years on uh with this one it still has that yeah it definitely does that kind of wet sack barley mm -hmm. nice little bit of light fruit maybe like a, a canned pears and syrup note in there mm. Oh yeah, it's it's pretty juicy. Mm -hmm. It also, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's very uh, it's mouth watering and then immediately dry. Uh, for me, it kind of is like it's like a dance in my mouth. I wouldn't say it's a battle. Uh, very dry up front on the tongue, though. Yeah, dry, then a little bit juicy, and then a bit of spice at the finish is what I'm getting to. Yeah. Chris says, totally crushable, price notwithstanding. I mean, it, it, it is older and it is 300 bucks. Not bad for a 26-year-old uh, single cast, but yeah, it is it is up there for sure. Getting a little bit more after the taste into uh, like cream of wheat cereal on the nose right now. A little bit of oatmeal. Yeah, I was going to say like <laughs> a stale beer. Yeah, that's a good call. And it is a distillery that uh, apparently on the same site, there was a brewery back in, that was established in 1488, but somewhere along the way went defunct. For Telebardine. Telebardine yeah. is a distillery has only been around since 1949. Uh, Jeff says he's getting a little chocolate in there right before the space. Yeah, that's a good call, Jeff. I can see that. Yeah. yeah, orchard fruit and syrup, uh, Chris says. Yeah, I, I I like that sort of sweet uh, juiciness that's coming through there. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I look forward to seeing how that opens up. Yeah, I, me too. I usually uh, have my 
whiskey's poured about 20 minutes before we get going. Uh, opening three uh, tasting kits uh, <laughs> for this, getting the right one. I was I was wrong all over the place. I opened three kits. Luckily, I didn't pour any. Yeah. Finally nailed the right one right as we were coming on line here. So. <laughs> That was that was almost a wild version of roulette you were playing there. You could have been doing uh, just a random tasting and and giving different tasting notes for everything. <laughs> yeah, I started out with bourbons, and then I was like, oh, some of these aren't even covered. And I did a video for Instagram. I didn't post it, but I did one. <laughs> and then I opened up the uh, exploring Glen Loman and did a video for that. Was just tagging a few things, and he Evan starts giving me the lineup, and I was like, what? <laughs> I thought the uh, lineup we were starting with was number one. Yeah, it's like hold on, hold on, I need to be somewhere. <laughs> so clearly, it's been a long day, and I need this yeah. thing. It's uh, no rest for the wicked when it comes to work, I guess. Mm. It's exciting, guys. Uh, if you were at the shop last week, you're going to come in this week, and it's going to look uh, different, changed. Yeah. We're getting new cabinets again. So yeah, yeah, we're moving the whiskey wall once more. Yeah, yeah, we need a bigger wall. <laughs> okay, next up is Berries the Perspective, 21-year-old blend. This is a, a whiskey that we actually had on our shelves for how long ago was it? it was I think it was actually pre-COVID when we first saw this one, where we got a 21-year-old, a 25-year-old, and a 35-year-old, if uh, my memory serves. Um, originally can't get the 25 and 35 anymore, but they did offer us more of the 21 and it's less expensive than the first time around. So this is a 21 year old blended Scotch whiskey. Um, no idea what is in here. Uh, I don't know if this is a parcel that Barry Brothers and Rudd purchased or, or something that they had a hand in putting together, but uh, I really like this one personally, the, for the few times that I've had a chance to go dive into it. Yeah. Me too. I, I think we poured it at one of our festivals earlier this year, and I just thought it was just very fresh, very approachable, very fruit forward and clean and just something you don't have to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember getting uh, some nice sort of depth of chocolate notes on this one and and into espresso notes with a hint of smoke and beet on the palate. Um, last time I tried it, but right now it's, it's surprising me with some citrus notes on the nose. Yeah, I, I get more citrus and the little bits of uh, notes of vanilla in there. Um, Kevin Donda says a uh, faint orange cleaning solution. I uh, totally agree on the nose on that one. Like you're rubbing uh, uh, an old leather chair with it. Uh, that's Jeff. I'm I'm glad you gave the the spelling correction there because I was afraid to ask if that was a type of tea or not. I really <laughs> sure. yeah, you never know with Jeff. Yeah, what kind of knowledge he'll throw down? Um, yeah, very citrusy, but nice dry kind of chocolate um, mm -hmm. tannins on the finish, almost tea like actually. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, chocolate okay. definitely dry. A hint of smoke and peat there for me. Um, bit of there's got to be some sherry casks in there, I would guess. I would think so. There's a good amount of spice in there. It has this. I mean, it's forty three percent alcohol. It would have been maybe neat to see this at higher, but it does have this nice sort of old whiskey feel, where it's it's kind of austere and dry. Get the the dunnage notes that uh, were coming in on the uh, telebardine as well, um, and that that just touch of peat in there as well. Fino sherry notes. Thank you, Emmett. I think I need to mm. experience more fino sherries. Well, uh, which uh, maybe you'll have an opportunity sometime soon. Yeah, because like, which we can do at the Sherry versus Sherry tasting That's in store right. in September. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. Yeah, I uh, I almost feel like a half ounce isn't enough to delve into this one. Mm -hmm. 
it's got a nice bit of now that I've tasted it once, it almost like uh, some canned pineapple, uh, sliced up pineapple uh, bits in there as well on the nose. Yeah, I uh, I was actually thinking of uh, like one of those um, like mango fruit snacks, like the sunrise mm -hmm. mango fruit snacks to me. It, I again, I have no idea what this is, but it, it's kind of reminding me a little bit of even though it's a blended scotch, not a blended malt, of the uh, a lighter version of the boutique soup town blend. Oh, interesting where it's it's got that that soft sherry a uh, little bit of bitter chocolate in there and then the the tropical fruit starts coming through yeah Probably not as heavy on the oak as the soup yeah. tin. Yeah. yeah interesting really nice whiskey though mm -hmm. okay next up number three Yeah, Jeff, unfortunately, the, the sherry tasting, you'll have to fly out here uh, to attend that one, unfortunately. We should do a virtual event of that style at some point, though, because uh, mm -hmm. sherry should last a decent amount of time in small sample vials. Yeah. Uh, number three is our Berries Glen Murray, uh, KWM cask, or Glen Murray, pardon me. This is so pretty on the nose. It's so fresh and vibrant and playful. Yeah, I really like Glen Murray at this age. This is uh, 15 years old. Um, we've been lucky enough, if you're a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society member, uh, over the last, say, five years, we've gotten some really good Glen Murray cans and possibly, or casks, and possibly even before that, in the uh, teens range to mid twenties range from the SMWS. And it tends to be just this fantastic distillery that um, takes to whatever cask you toss the whiskey into in a really cool manner. Um, this one is just strictly uh, ex bourbon hogshead, if I remember correctly, or ex bourbon barrel. Um, but uh, I've had it in ex Chardonnay casks, ex Chenin Blanc casks finishes in ex sauterne casks. I've had fully matured Glen Murray for 20 plus years in uh, toasted oak barrels that gets very bourbon-like and neat in style. Um, but this is Glen Murray Distillery itself. Haven't been there. I stole these from their uh, website, uh, these bottling or these uh, shots. Founded in 1897, owned by La Martiniquez, uh, located in Elgin. And nearest neighbors include Linkwood, Milton, Milton Duff, Benrick, and the rest of the Speyside distilleries. Mm. Oh, it's so creamy. Yeah. It does have this really nice cherry note coming through on the so nose. Those right bourbon now. casks really yeah. speaking to it, eh? Thank you, Jen, for sharing. What is it? Uh, it's a, a screenshot of the uh, the information for the sherry versus sherry tasting. Oh, right on. Yeah, I saw Sammy there somewhere. He just joined mm. long ago. Right on, Sammy. <clears throat> Sammy, I'll make you co-host. Uh, you can chime in whenever you like to, man. Hmm. like lots of uh nice like drying fruits but still lots of yeah. uh a lot of uh like melon and stone fruit coming through as well mm -hmm. a nice light waxiness and waxiness mm -hmm. is something that i'm gonna get into more on the next one i think but uh it, it's almost like like a squeeze of lemon and a honeycomb or honeycomb cereal, if you prefer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can Walker see that. says stone fruit, like a baked melon. Uh, very well could be a very heavily baked melon there, uh, depending on what time of day it is. Maybe it's the melon just after 420. <laughs> oh, 
right now. It is of the age where it starts to experiment a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we uh, uh, the Jeff, uh, our store Jeff was actually uh, hired by email, uh, not offwish.com. Um, but uh, I, I, he might be a knock of, off of you, Jeff. I don't think he's that into tea, but he, he sure knows his wine. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard him talk about tea. No. <laughs> no. Man, this Glen Marie's, it's like not super heavy, not super light either, but just gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very nice. And I like that we're, you know, it's like, it's such a sherry world. And I've said this before, but I, I really love a nice, clean, like, ex-bourbon whiskey. Yeah. yeah. It's just an ex-bourbon cask in a sherry world. Yeah. Oh, I just had a nose of our next whiskey. And boy, is it uh, just turning around a different quarter. Mm. I'll join you there in a sec. I'm just going to add a couple drops of water to this Glen Marie just to see what happens. I think it might be able to stand up to it. I think it probably will. It's it's quite spicy. Oh, it reminds me of the uh, like lightly seasoned sunflower seeds or spits right now on the nose. Oh, right on. As long as they're not like the all dressed flavored ones, then I'm all right. I I like the nose with water. I prefer the palate without personally. Yeah, you lose some of that creamy waxiness. Yeah, the uh, spice sticks water. around, but the 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 waxy sort of texture disappears a bit. Yeah. Chris is uh, working his no water lobby. Uh, and uh, getting some supporters there. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's dive into this Del Ewan. <clears throat> this is like a nice big kind of waxy, <laughs> stinky spirit. Yeah, it's it does have a bit of stink to it, uh, and a little bit of uh, sharp stink probably come from the uh, ex Fin Santo cask. So we the the Glen Murray, the Del Ewan, the Inchgower, and the final one, the the Rua Moore, um, we selected those I think all at the same time from a set of samples that we got from Barry Brothers and Rudd. Um, uh, one, I'm shocked that they let us select four. Uh, two, I'm shocked that we actually selected for it because it is we get cast samples a lot and there's there's been times where we've selected none um there have been times where we've selected multiple i but i think this is the first time where we we thought the quality was so good in the lineup that we did select four different cast samples uh to be bottled for us and luckily they said yes so this one is uh ignore the 2009 it's a 2010 vintage as the uh <laughs> the bottle says uh, 12 years old, yeah, Del Yuen, and I think this is has to be our our first ex Vin Santo cask. Uh, yeah. That is not something that we usually go for, um, but it works really nicely in this one. Yeah, and and that well. said, it's the perfect you know Sabbath wine uh, whiskey to have. Uh, mm -hmm. Vin Santo is known as the uh, the holy wine amongst Italian wines, it's a dessert nice. wine, because I think where you're getting some of that funk from uh in the wine process yeah yeah again has that a, like a little bit of that uh citrus cleaner note on the nose mm -hmm. but along with uh some some definite grape notes at least for me yeah oh that is a very dry uh spirit yeah. so uh Jeff's asking what Vincento is. This is where we need the other Jeff uh, to answer <laughs> that question. Um, so I'm going to butcher it because I honestly haven't had a whole lot of Vincento. But if you have, um, typically it's almost like a sherry where it's a dessert wine. I believe it is fortified. 
um, typically similar to a dessert wine or port, and it does uh, get this sort of oxidized, nutty aroma, but has a ton of sweetness to it as well. I'm Googling it. Yep, bone dry like a fino sherry, but extremely sweet. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really love that citrus note up front. I am getting some nuttiness in there. Mm. Like waxy candy all over the place on the palate. Goes into this uh, almost like uh, honey roasted almond texture where yeah. you get the, like the all, almond skins in there as well and that slight dryness coming from it on the on the mid palate am i weird to think there's something savory in here i think it again it, like for me it's yeah. nuttiness but i could see a bit of savoriness on the finish kevin says dried apricots that's a good call yeah, yeah. um it does have that dried apricot like you could you could maybe even get into sulfur uh and saying sulfur just like dried apricots have some sulfur notes to them um but uh it's a pretty cool drown. Yeah. I can see why people enjoy this. It's very different. Mm -hmm. I think it, the, the dryness I really enjoy there because it keeps it from being too jammy. Uh, like it, it's got a ton of like marmalade and fruit notes right up front before that dryness comes in. Yeah. Yeah. This is something you could pair with like, uh, with any dessert, really, I think it would complement it right, really well. Any sweetness that you you oh, get yeah. to it, yeah. Um, Evan, I don't know if you have access to like our inventory, but when I checked today, we only had like thirty bottles of this left. Oh, that's there's we haven't even pulled it all yet. There's okay, more because I like was really worried because I was chatting about this with a guy today. And he was between this and another one, and I was like, ah, don't even think about the other one. Yeah. There's more. No, the uh, the good news of, about this tasting is that uh, the Tullabardine is the only one that we don't have a lot of. Uh, everything else, um, because it was released in the summertime and and sales aren't as big uh, on stuff, everybody's away and such, we we do have plenty of these uh, bottles and we're not in danger of running out of, from them on this tasting at least, uh, including the last one, which we haven't even launched yet. So, Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try this one with water just for kicks before we move on. Apologies in advance, Chris Walker. Chris, don't look. Yeah. Look, a bird on your fridge. Oh, oh it, it just left. <laughs> yeah. Phil, scotch is for bathing as well, if you have enough <laughs> Yeah, I often take my scotch That's right. uh, when I bathe. Though the waxiness uh, comes out more pronounced on the nose with uh, water. I think it's still there on the palate as well. Mm -hmm. But you lose, I think, some of the those fruit notes. Uh, and it turns more, it feels older, more dunnage, more oak. More dunnage and also a bit more syrupy, uh, yeah. even though it stays dry. Yeah goes from marmalade and jam notes to, to syrup, I guess I would say. Not a sweet syrup though, just that texture to me. I guess there's some sweetness, it's lingering. Yeah, yeah Sammy, you know you've, uh, you're have you rich or you have too many bottles if you're using cast drink whiskey to bathe in. That's one of the signs. I hope you don't have any cuts on your body. <laughs> <laughs> it'll cauterize them that's important <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow that's Man, the, pretty the, fantastic the, yeah i can see why we picked both those it's uh, we must have picked these 10 plus months ago because i don't remember oh i remember it was a speed yeah. round yeah. It's like, hey, you guys, we have 15 minutes because Andrew has all of these things and we need to choose. Here are some samples. Right. I think we enjoyed all of them. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and luckily with Berry Brothers and Rudd, the, the pricing has been tremendous uh, that we've been getting on stuff like this too. Yeah, well, and I remember when uh, our Tomat and 15 came in and Andrew was like, say goodbye to these prices. We'll never yep. see this again. And then these guys show up and we're like, hey, this is pretty good. Yep. <laughs> you had me worried. Okay, on to Inchgower. And this is a distillery that I'm I'm still trying to wrap my head around. It. I, I just haven't had enough of them. Yeah, and, and truthfully for me, some of the things that I have tried, I haven't enjoyed too much. Yep. Um, but just first off, so far on the nose, I'm I'm not not hating it. Mm -hmm. So this is uh Exo Loroso Sherry Hogshead. Uh, 300 bottles for this guy, 54.2% alcohol from Inchgower Distillery. Um, the last Inchgower I tried was a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottle, probably around, actually a little bit older than this. Uh, the uh, Society bottle was 15 years old. I think it was from 2006 or 2007, um, bottled in uh, for the July Scotch Malt Whiskey Society outturn. Uh, Inchgower, another Diageo distillery like Del Ewan, uh founded in 1871. Uh, most of what Inchgower produces goes into Bells. This has like a ton of polish uh, notes for me and like waxes, like cleaning waxes, cleaning polishes. Um, Jen is a fan of uh, the Inchgowers that she's tried. That's cool. Uh, so Jeff, uh, it was probably because I, I think I wrote the, the note on that one. I almost always put X, whatever. Um, cause if I feel like if you say it's Asian Oloroso cask, it's like, it still holds it. The sherry's in there too. Whereas it's, it's X Oloroso cause it, it previously held sherry, but that's just me being a, a dork, I guess, when it comes down to it. Uh, we like that you're a dork. Mm, that's good. Kevin saying cigarette cigarette ash. Thank you, Kevin. Totally. I totally agree. I, I am oh. trying to decide if this is peated or if it's barrel char. And I, there's the last it's gotta be inch I had. Again, I thought the same thing. It's like cigarette ashy and like sharpie again. It's so heavy on the ash. Is this like an ex Lafroig barrel? Maybe, maybe it is an ex like Oloroso cask. Wouldn't that be something? And I'm also, I hate when Tony cooks and I'm doing these things because I don't know how much is my nose and what's coming in under the door. Yeah. Um, but I'm getting a little bit of like beef stock on here as well. If yeah. I'm wrong, that's him. <laughs> yeah, that, I could see that 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 touch of savory note again. It's got some spice and nutty notes coming through there on the nose again for me. Maybe some roasted chestnuts there. Oh man, like yeah, that's that's maybe that is barrel char, but that's uh, that's some definite smoke on the palate for me. Yeah. You also get these like big fruit notes, like that sherry yeah. really does come in. Um, you just have to get past that char. Yeah. It's like you just finished eating a fruit roll up and now you're chewing on some teriyaki peppery beef jerky. <laughs> Someone's blowing smoke in your face. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's, you know, as one does often. You know, or like ash their cigarette on your fruit roll up. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, I did not expect that. Yeah, that's that savoriness. It's it's almost like a touch of hickory on the nose right now for me. Oh, interesting. I think I'm going to add water to this one. I, at this point, I'm not sure if I love it or I don't. So water's not going to hurt it. I, I'm not going to lie with the smokiness. I almost expected like a minor mushroom cloud to come up out of the glass. When you open the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> it does go like further into like a maple barbecue note on the nose with water for me. 
Um, yeah. And like minty. Yeah, it does have something cooling on there. <laughs> yeah. I might add another drop. I'm quite uh, enjoying this evolution here. Uh, minty, you're into uh, Fisherman's Friends. Mm. Mm. You know, yes. the palate does pretty well with water. It does. Say. The smoke kind of settles with a few drops. Um, I, I, <laughs> I have a different... The smoke settles. Yes, there's peat, but it's not as smoky and ashy for me. It's, um, it's a very drying smoke, like a liquid smoke or something like that. Yeah. It, I still get that spiciness that makes me think peat as well, uh, like Emmett. Uh, goes into more like a, a really good cured salami uh, note on the palate for me right now, too. Very cool. Uh, Jeff said, I'm finding this one of the weirdest yet intriguing drinks I've had in a while. That's very cool. I agree. Um, even from tasting it to, to sort of quickly to set the order, this is not what I was expecting. This is going to be, I'm going to try one more inch, inch cow and then I'm going to be like head over heels in love with it. Sorry, like I am with Tilda Moore all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, Quite a wonderful yeah. uh, evolution here. Well, speaking of Sherry and speaking of Tobermory. Yes. Berry, this is, berry, uh, berries in the bunch. Yeah. This is one of the berries we've had the longest just because it is from a Sherry butt. Uh, bottled in 2022, 504 bottles in uh, total. I think we've sold about uh, a little more than half that, 64.8% alcohol. Um, I I was really tempted to put this last in the lineup. Um, Sammy fortunately talked me off the ledge on that. Um, but uh, you guys will have to decide because I honestly haven't tried the room more yet. Uh, I didn't try it when I, I set the lineup. So I'm, I'm interested to see. I think it is going to be drier versus this, but uh, just based on trying other peated Glen turrets, but let's try the Tobermory and see what we think. Yeah. And if you disagree with this lineup, Sammy's email is sammy at com. <laughs> Please feel free to direct your disdain towards him. That's right. Hate mail gets sent to you. Yeah. But also remember, he packs most of the orders that go That's out of right. the store. You know, it's a catch 22 here. Oh. So this is our Berries Tobermory, 13 years old, from a sherry cask, uh, and only 150 bucks uh, for that high alcohol. It's crazy. Do not take this camping if you're going camping unsupervised. Yeah. So Tobermory, of course, was founded in 1798, uh, owned by a distill who has just been sold to Heineken, uh, and it is likely up for sale along with Bunnelhaven Distillery. Jack, here's uh, your chance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, located in the town of Tobermory on the Isle of Mull, and its nearest neighbors are actually on the Scottish mainland. Uh, two newer distilleries, Ardenburg, and of course, a lot of you know, but Enchian, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is one that we haven't really seen yet. Hmm. And uh, remind me, I'll send you that GoFundMe link at the end of the tasting, if need be. Oh, it'd be great just to control the production of the check. Wow, yeah. What a dream. I know Jeff's thinking the same thing. And Boonhaven. Like, <laughs> can you think of two other distilleries that you'd want to control? Like, there's no other ones that really matter. Right. They're really keeping the world going here. Mm -hmm. mm. I just, I love how big and diverse this palette is. Yeah. It is one of those crazy statistic bottles where it's kind of like Octomore, where it's like nothing this big should be this drinkable at the same yeah. time and this yeah. balanced. Like this should be sort of like just this mutant beast of a whiskey that is cumbersome and unbalanced and fiery, but for being 64.8% alcohol, this is so well put together. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And like clean, clean chocolatey sherry. What is scarecrow? Scarecrow farts? What the heck? Am I reading that wrong, Chris? I know uh, there's a beer called uh, Unicorn Farts, but uh, I don't know Scarecrow Farts. Okay, I'm hoping this is a typo. Maybe you went to the, uh, the Smell-O-Vision version of Wizard of Oz or something like that? I don't know. It's like, is the Scarecrow in a field of corn and eat too much corn? Like, I don't know what this <laughs> means. Um, I love it. There's so much, like, dark fruit and and dry fruit and chocolates and tobacco notes yeah. and like meaty notes like I want to like binge drink this while eating yeah. like burnt ends yeah burnt ends <laughs> like you you have some gloss at raisins every now and then just to change oh, it yeah. Up. Just, yeah just to keep that sweetness going that's right yeah oh, and at, at the same time I want to smoke a cigar yeah because I it think is... it could stand up I, I like saying when I, I introduce this to people that are coming in and trying something that like there's sherry bombs. Mm -hmm. This is like a, a nuclear weapon, essentially, right. at this point. <laughs> this is why aliens are coming to Earth. They're like, stop right. it. Yeah. Stop this nonsense. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to try some water with it, because from what I recall, it does just, just fine. Probably cut it down all the way to like 59% there. <laughs> I don't know how much water did you put in. <laughs> okay, so Chris says breaks down completely with water. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe him. So now we're talking about the Wicked Witch in, in uh, Whisker, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Uh, Adam, we're just uh, trying the Tobermory uh, in the lineup. I would say catch up, but they're all pretty high in cast rates, so take your time. Yeah. Chris, uh, you're off your rocker. Uh, that does not break down with water. Chris doesn't drink water. Yeah, I think it just, he's, <laughs> he's had a nervous breakdown from having some water. <laughs> Uh, Noel says he gets cinnamon hearts. Uh, is that with or without uh, water there, Noel? Because I, I do get a bit more of that spice on the finish with water, personally. I, I would agree. I think with water, it brings out a little bit more spiciness. Mm -hmm. Never waters. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's on the crisp ballot there. <sighs> I don't know if I would get in that boat. Uh, Sam says, Sammy says... Uh, that water brings out some coconut. Hmm. Good call. Not something you get a lot of on uh, uh, yeah. extra casks is uh, coconut typically, but I never I find coconut. I don't. I don't know if I've ever smelt a, like a raw coconut. I know what toasted coconut is, but mm -hmm. in Alberta, coconuts just are not everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Very little danger of uh, one falling on your head here. I dare another drop of water. Yeah, that is just stupidly good. And I'm not just saying that as a potential shareholder in Tobermory Distillery. Again, uh, watch for my GoFundMe link. Mm. So, so good. Mm -hmm. Well, we've ran through it relatively quickly, but let's uh, let's try this room more. I have not had this one. All I know is I'm not allowed to sell the sample bottles that are clogging up the space in the back room. <laughs> well, and we're even with this tasting, we're not putting it live yet. We're we're not officially selling this to until September, I believe. Um, however, if uh, for you, those of you that are in the tasting tonight, um, if you are interested in the bottle and want to jump the line, essentially, um, email me. I'll uh, I'll take care of that for you. So mm. 140 bucks for this guy. This is a Peter Glen Turret. Uh, Peter Glen Turret, of course, is known as Rua Moore 
if I'm pronouncing that correctly, from 2012, 60.2% alcohol, which just seems like nothing compared to the 64.8. Um, 10 years old, though, and Peter Glenn Turd is something that people, uh, a lot of people still aren't, still aren't completely aware of, but uh, we have been seeing some Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottlings and a few other distilleries do bottlings uh, lately of it. So Glen Turret is one of the distilleries that claims to be the oldest in Scotland, uh, depending on which date you pick. Uh, <laughs> their own uh, coat of arms, their emblem says 1763. Um, there was a distillery producing on the site, I believe, at that time. However, it closed and was demolished. And then uh, the Glen Turret distillery actually took its name from another Glen Turret distillery that shut down, I think, around 1826 or 1875. Uh, it is currently owned by the, the Lily Group, who bought it from Edrington. A um, lot of French companies that own uh, distilleries in this, Tullibardine, uh, Glen Turret, and Glen Murray, all owned by uh, uh, French companies, actually. And its nearest neighbor is Tullibardine. So we've uh, gone full circle in this lineup. I am getting, like, an awesome mustard note. <laughs> Oh, that's a good call. Like mustard, and I'm not a mustard fan, but like a a, a barbecue sauce with a little bit of mustard. Yeah, in. like the dry rub. You rubbed yeah. mustard all over it before you totally. put it in the smoker. The yeah, Glen Turret tends to have this really cool. Pe peat whiskey relationship where they're peated whiskey and I can't recall I think this is sherry that this one was done in better check my notes yeah uh filled in punch and casks yeah yeah that's right so we've got a, a decent amount of bottles of this although it was split with the whiskey club um but uh sherry glenturic it's this like crazy like burnt leaves in the fall plus barbecue note to it that is just Super interesting. Yeah. Oh, this has got a wicked nose. Yeah, it does. And uh, Kevin says icing sugar and fresh baked donuts. Oh man, that's. <laughs> I I wouldn't say that's, like, that's one. Once you say it, I I can't not smell it. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm personally leaning to more like that deep fried donut, but it's yeah. it's still good. Oh, if this was a donut, I, it would be sold out immediately. Yeah. So the 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 Scotch Malt Whiskey Society Glen Turrets that we've had that have been peated re recently have uh, all or a lot of them have had this sort of like dry yet confectionery note to it, and being like crazy spicy on the palate as well. Who do we know that can make this into a donut? Sammy, do you make donuts? Yeah, he bakes. Oh. Sammy is such a great <laughs> baker, everyone. If you didn't know, he's got skills baking with alcohol. Yeah. I'm sorry, and, lads and ladies, is already taken. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> he will steal the whiskey from your bottle and then show up the next day and be like, I made you cookies with that cherry gin. Here's some scones. What? You had my gin? She's like, yeah, but I baked it. <laughs> oh, this is very cool. This does. Very meaty. So I will say, now that I've had them side by side, uh, Sammy, you were totally right. Uh, putting this after the Tobermory was the correct move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chris says the GT is stellar. I totally agree. Um, it's going to be very hard for me not to say that the the Tobermory is the best whiskey of the tasting, um, just because I've got skin in the game. Uh, but uh, this is damn good. All compliments for this right lineup can be sent to Sammy at KensingtonWineMarket.com. That's right. Yeah. This is why he's my work husband. I, I would never get married again, but at work, I'm happily married. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay with that, honestly, because I'm, I'm like shit that rolls downhill at work. Uh, compliments go uphill, right? So they'll okay. eventually get me before they yeah. go on to Andrew. So then it's like, hey, you know what, Evan? Good job for 
getting Sammy's word in on that. Wait, That's right. Good yeah. for you. Way to take a seven second opinion and and <laughs> not ruin everybody's palates with yours. Ah, uh, Phil. Sorry to see you and Susan leave, but hopefully we'll see you guys soon. Yeah, no more oh, glasses next time Phil's we see still you. There. Uh, Susan, yeah. uh, Phil gets to finish everything off. Susan had to take off. <laughs> Even better. Yeah. Uh, I just, but you better get so up. The, the whiskey was so morning. good that you had to get rid of her, eh, Phil? <laughs> uh, before we, uh, I do have a vote set up for this one, but I'm just going to try this, uh, the Peter Glenn turret with water just for kicks. Oh man, nosing um, these backwards like is so very interesting. I'm looking forward to going through the lineup again because uh, I think Adam is. If it wasn't for the Tobermory, for the Tobermory and the Glen Tour, it would be hard to pick a favorite because the Glen Murray is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, that Tullibard, I even though I'm not a, typically a Tully fan, is awesome, and the mm -hmm. Del Ewan is fantastic as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doing a berries tasting at the end, it's like, what is your favorite kid? Yeah. They all have their strengths. Uh, Adam, sorry to see that you uh, didn't hit the get the here for the beginning, but uh, we uh, will go through the lineup again as we're doing the boat. Yeah, just for and, you. Uh, if you need the recording afterwards, just email me. And uh, once it's all set up in YouTube, I'll email you back telling you the link. Very cool. Mm. Well, let's go back through nose and taste one more time and then we'll do the vote. <laughs> yeah, the, I, honestly, I think the, the rumor did just as well with water as without. It was like the Tobermory where there's not a wrong way to drink it. I love any time we like discuss water with whiskey. You can see Chris's eyes just like get a little bit wider. Like, oh, right. like what you're saying is hurting his soul. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't he, actually he see his beard right now. It's just all eyes in that screen. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow the 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 Talibardine is it still has that burlap sack note, but it's got like very much into honeydew melon and uh, cantaloupe on the nose for me. I just get waxy crayons. Oh, waxy crayons is a good call. Or just, yeah, we'll just stick with that. It's like you're peeling the paper off those Crayolas to, to, because you can't sharpen them, trying to get down from the nub. <laughs> it's, yeah, but it's funny enough, it's like specifically the black crayon. I don't know. Oh, why. really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I smell color tonight, folks. I I was gonna say yellow or green. <laughs> it's that melon influence, eh? That's right. Yeah. I, I think not so much melon for me, but the melon rind. Um oh, Jen, I think hit it. Waxed paper. Yeah. That's that's a good call. Mm -hmm. It does have this nice sort of like floral green note coming through now, too. I get a little bit more melon on the palate this time around. Um, and like the white part of a watermelon, like when you eat too much into it. Mm. Okay, let's go back to the berries perspective. And I almost wonder if I should have done this one first. I think it would have killed the Tullabardine though. Still has some really nice citrus notes on the nose. Those orange oils on a, on like the rim of a Negroni or old fashioned. Mm. It's still very good. Yeah, I I almost, I wouldn't have put it first, but I think this would show so much better if it was just standing on its own. Mm -hmm. It's hard with something like this in a 43% or in a cast strength lineup. 
because the palate's good, but it's it's getting overtaken by everything else. Yeah, I agree. Okay, back to that Glen Murray. Oh, the nose is so pretty. Is it ever? Sunflower seed still for me. I wish this was a perfume. This uh, <laughs> this is just reminding me of watching my my youngest son play t ball right now. <laughs> Spits and all. Yeah, I was gonna say, take us to that experience. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's it's fun when they're four years old and they have to be like, no, keep running, keep running. Like when they hit the base. <laughs> no, the the next base is over there. Yeah, I heard a comedian talk about, yeah, I coach my kids' t-ball team. Mm -hmm. What is there to coach? The ball is on a stick. You just got to go. <laughs> That's right. Now. That's right. Swing now. Oh, man. No I, remember, I remember being devastated because I couldn't hit a ball on a tee in grade two at the <laughs> age of eight. Or grade four, sorry, age of 10. <laughs> like, if it was uh, if it was on a, a pit, pitch to me, I had a, be a better chance. But if it was stationary, I was ruined. You're just hitting too low, hey. <laughs> That's right. Just smacking that uh, that tee off all the time. All right, Emmett. I'm gonna just hmm. like splash a little before getting in my car. Hopefully, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that Glen Murray is great. Like it, it's it's such a summer whiskey. It is, it's, yeah. It's, it's just like lively and vibrant and round and wonderful. Mm -hmm. Kevin says fresh cut grass and uh, a little bit more milk chocolate. Yeah, I can see that grassy note for sure. Yeah, I'm back to the Del Ewan now. Oh man, that is like nosing Vincenzo right now. It is so nutty on the nose for me. Oh, more syrupy too. Mm -hmm. And it has that sort of like nutty oxidized note coming through. Like when you do your sherry versus sherry tasting, there will be sherry that noses like this. It reminds me of like an almond croissant. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. Yeah, marzipan and all. Yeah. All yeah. Little bit of like cherry compote or something in there. Or maybe strawberry compote. Definite whininess on the palate, but not in a bad way at all for me. Mm -hmm. I would love to know what uh, Kurt thinks of this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he's tried it without getting goosebumps on his arm. So that's a, that's a good sign. <laughs> <you think. laughs> he doesn't have a, a, a physical reaction to it. Yeah. This is, this is very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous. This is one where it was good that we didn't see ex Santo cask. Like, I don't think they had room to put it on the tiny label. Because we probably would have just foo fooed it based on what it was in. But yeah, this is a really nice whiskey. I love the waxiness and nuttiness in it. Okay, back to probably the weirdest one uh, of the night, which is an Inchgower. Crazy that this is a weird one. And it's a Tobermory and a Peter Glen Turd off of this. Still very much a, a cigarette note on there. There's something else here that I cannot put my finger on it. It's like, what's the, there's there's a cigarella, that, a cigarillo, sorry, that's got like a cherry, cherry wood note to it. Can't remember what that is, but that's what I'm getting right now. Yeah, it might be Captain Black's, Jeff. Although, I, honestly, I have no idea what my brands of cigarettes are, or cigarillos for that matter. <laughs> uh, does have a little bit of that uh, teriyaki beef jerky note still coming through. There's also like an oiliness. Yeah. I cannot place this. Like olive oil. 
type yeah. weariness. That's a good call. And going to that teriyaki note, it's like uh like something is burning uh on the Chinese food buffet. Okay. <laughs> Where yeah. it, it's like just the the bottom of of like the uh, the ginger beef is, like, is is like caramelizing to the point of burning. It's like burnt hoisin sauce. Yeah, there you go. It's the wok <laughs> flavor. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> Barroom peanuts. Yeah, that that's getting in that uh, zone as well. What I'm feeling, but there's something else that I'm I'm very traumatized that I cannot figure it out. <laughs> so uh jeff once again walk is a type of tea right i love it when you talk tea to me <laughs> all right everybody camera's off they're about to have a moment <laughs> <laughs> wow that is wicked that is so cool such a yep. cool whiskey. I can't it believe is. I haven't tried it before, but I saw Inchgar on the label and I was like, nah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what that is. It's it's crazy because this might have more smokiness to it than the Glen Turret. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, back to the Tilbury morning. I'm not done. This is so good. Well, man. Me too, but I gotta go back to my best friend there. Still has tons of raisin notes, dates, but uh, dried burnt apricots chocolate. coming on this one again, or no? Yeah, I get burnt chocolate. Yeah. And a hint of chili pepper. On the Tobermory. Yeah, like, a, you know, like Mexican chocolate. Oh, okay, okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, just like the slightly spicy savory. Mm -hmm. It does have almost like a like a pepper flake note on there, uh, dried pepper flakes. When you say that, mm -hmm. oh, I'm I have not <clears throat> pardon me bought a bottle of this yet. I bought bottles for other people. Um, but I think I might have to get one of these before it eventually leaves the store. I think we, we have a good amount still. Yeah. I think we're only halfway through this cask. There's there's a nice sort of uh, like earthy, like uh, old school root beer or sarsaparilla note in there as well, along with everything else and a touch of licorice. Mm -hmm. Okay, back to the peated Glen Turret. That, that nose is just showing so, so well. Oh my God, this is so cool. Um, you know, what I'm getting right now is uh, uh, sweet potato fries. What kind of fries? Sweet potato fries with a, a chipotle dip. From a and w. Chipotle mayonnaise dip, yeah. Totally. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting more of that like beef jerky, pepperoni mm -hmm. kind of note, that like saltiness. A little, I'm, I'm maybe a little bit of mushroom. I don't know if you've said that before or actually said on the inch guy with the smoke, but I'm getting a little bit of mushroom. No, you know, I, I haven't mentioned that in this one, but I can see where you're going on it. it it's like the, the cooking mushrooms note. Max is hickory sticks. Yeah. Chris has uh, gotten off the water hate and now he's channeling his inner macho man. <laughs> by snapping it into a Slim Jim. <laughs> uh, I saw a video on Instagram and this guy's sitting in his car just peeling back the Slim Jim. And he's like, oh man, this is so good. This is so good. And then a time lapse. He's like, I don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> too much sodium too all many, at once. Too yeah. many Slim Jims. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this this is why we overdo things and then we don't try them for five years. Yeah, the smart <laughs> people stick to hot rods. That's uh <laughs> that's the good stuff right there. 
Oh, that, that's like you just said water again to Chris. You just lit up. <laughs> His eyes got even bigger. What happened? <laughs> yeah, he has two eyes. Who knew? That. Mm. I'm still gonna. I'm still gonna pick Tober Murray as my number one because I have to. But that Glenter is really good. I was gonna say that Inchgower is really stirring me up. Uh, it, I'm gonna yeah. do another sassy pick later with the Jägermeister and Inchgower, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to. Uh, I'll start the vote for everybody. That's. Uh, I love this round, uh, Phil. Now you don't have to share your vote. So. Uh, Ooh. There you go, guys. And uh, well, everybody else is voting. Uh, Harmony, what are your fa two favorites of the night? That's not fair. I know. The Tobermore has always been my favorite. And I like I, people when they ask me, which one should I get? I'm like the Tobermore. But also you should buy something different because mm -hmm. every time I tell people what I like, they buy it. And then. Yep. I'm like, you know, I can wait till September to buy it and then it sells out. Yep. So um truthfully, I, I'm with you, Evan, and the Tobermory is just a perfect whiskey to me. Yep. But in the uh in the spirit of experiments and a blind tasting, which for me this was. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I, I love the smokiness, but I just on the nose, I'm really kind of torn between the inch gallery and the diluent. Mm -hmm. uh, Sammy, do you want to chime in? Know. What are your two favorites of the night, Sammy? Uh, well, I like, you know, the uh, Grand Turin. That is still like, you know, my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like not the best Grand Turin, you know, I have a try. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other one is the uh, top Mori. Yeah, I still like the uh, chocolate, like you know, Christmas cake taste to it. Yeah, I yeah, do like I, the Glen Turret. I love that mustard note. Yeah, yeah. And I hate mustard, and I love that mustard note. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I've never. I'm not like Eli, where I'm like a connoisseur of mustard. Yeah, um, but it works. It works. It intrigues me. Yeah, you know, I I'm gonna pick Glen Tur or Tur Tobermory as my first. Glen Turret is my second. I really want to put the Glen Murray in there, but uh, I don't know why. Like I've been on such a non sherry kick for about three years now, but I'm picking two sherry casks that are just showing so so well. Like I I can't believe how good that Tobermory is. Like I I tend to prefer Tobermory and Exbourbon. Um, but that's just fantastic. And then the Glen Turd as well. Like I, I'm not a, typically a guy that goes for the sherry cask whiskey, or at least I haven't been for quite a while, but man, that one just shows so well and just slightly edges out the, the Glen Murray, which also was really good for me. Well, we've got uh, 14 out of 15 that have voted on the, on the faves here. So I'm going to share the poll here. Let's take a look. I love these results. I'm shocked, Inchgower. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the ones I liked, of course, didn't get any first round picks, which is fine. Tied for uh, second, though, with the Tobermory on the second round. Yeah. This is a wicked lineup. Very, yeah. very interesting. So, yeah, the room the, the more takes it uh, for the first round, for the first favorite for people, which is really cool. Um, and still gets two votes on the second round as well. And uh, uh, Kevin, what was your third? Uh, it's got to be the Glen Murray for number three. It's almost like a number two with an asterisk, but. <laughs> Aha. Well, that's, uh, that's quite a lineup. Like I, I do, I, I think the only one that doesn't really hold its own in here is the Berry's Perspective, which I still think is a really good whiskey. And it just doesn't hold its own because it's 43% in a cast strength world. Yeah. Um, it's still, again, on its own. I think it, it it's a great, great whiskey, but man. I, I personally um, like the perspective over the Teleburnin. Yeah, Tele I can see Tele that. Burdine. 
There you go. I, I, to me, that's the the best older telebardine that can I, I can remember having. Um, none, nothing has really stood out for me for their older stuff personally. Yeah, yeah. but that one shows really well. Have um, you had the nineteen fifty two? Because that was very good. Uh, I'm I'm talking in the uh, the only <laughs> slightly old, like the the almost thirty year range. Okay. Not in the uh, ancient by whiskey standards range. Yeah, yeah. I was spoiled when I got to try that. Nice. Yeah. Well, uh, very cool. Guys, do you have anything else you want to chat about? Anything else worth mentioning? No, not really. Uh, they're all for sale. Oh yeah. And um, if you are looking for the, the room more again, uh, mm. before we do shut down, uh, email me, like I said, and I will uh, connect you with a bottle. Otherwise, you can wait till it's launched in September. But uh, there's my email address. Uh, yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the tasting. Uh, fantastic lineup, in my opinion. I can. Uh, it was really fun to revisit those and actually pay attention to them now that we have them. And uh, I can see why we picked so many damn casks out of that one uh, bunch of samples that we got, because holy crap, um, they do stand out and stand up. Uh, thank you to Harmony and I, and Sammy for joining me uh, on this tasting. And uh, I got to take off. Harmony or Sammy, do you want to stick around? No, I'm so hungry. I need to eat. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> Same here. Um, thank you to everybody else for joining us as well. Uh, maybe we will see you on the Blinded by Bourbon tasting or the uh, Glen Lomond and Lock Scotia tasting that's coming up. Otherwise, after that, uh, unfortunately, you're stuck with Andrew again for virtual tastings for a lot of them after that. My condolences. Hopefully, I'll be able to be in on a couple of those as well. But uh, again, thank you all. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Good night, everyone. Bye.